Hello and good evening, everybody, for another masterclass uh, hosted by Sinoco Spirits. And today I am really in the mood for this because I like port wines and who doesn't, I guess. So um, we're going to talk um, about port wines. We're going to be transferred a little bit to sunny Portugal and we have the drinks for it. And we also have the guide to guide us through sunny Portugal. Uh, and that guide today is uh, Luis Carnero, who is the uh, international export manager for Taylor's, for Flatgate partnership, I have to say, but also for Taylor Sports. And he um, he can guide us through these six samples we have. So welcome, Luis. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. Um, again, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you so much to uh, organize this, uh, this event, this tasting. I think this is uh, a great way to, uh, to do it. And uh, I'm, I hope and I'm sure I will, uh, uh, we will spend a nice uh, uh, moment all together to, uh, to share and understand such a uh, beautiful brand as uh, Taylor's, as Taylor's. So uh, thank you. And uh, so I will be doing it in English. Uh, uh, and uh, with your help, uh, Johan, if uh, there are any kind of detail or questions, that you need to translate. Uh, thank you for your, thank you again for your support. I'll happily do so. And I also see that some of our regular guests like Jean and Marc have already adapted their backgrounds uh, to the, yes, to the, to, see, to, yes, to the evening. So thanks so for that, guys. Feel, I feel home like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Luis, where do you want to start with, uh, with so the tasting or with the explanation? For, um, uh, in terms, I, I would start uh, uh, a bit to uh, say what is a strategy, a strategy of such a house like uh, Taylor's, because you know the, um, they are uh, uh, all over the world. They are about uh, 100 million bottles, which are sold uh, uh, every year, and uh, uh, 85 or uh, more than 80 percent of it, maybe 85. Uh, of it, they are sold in five countries, which are um, in random. Uh, they are France, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Portugal, and England. Mm -hmm. So all these five countries, they absorb 85% of the port. And of course, uh, also those 100 million bottles, most of them, uh, more than uh, maybe nearly 80 to 90 percent of it I sold in uh, supermarkets. Okay, so that's so that not is, we're not we're not talking about tailors only, but port wine. No, as we're, a, we're as, talking as, about as, the industry. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about the activity in general. This is a little bit the habits of consumption of port uh, are based on uh, on a consumer that purchased the bottle in such a such a um, uh, such a uh, point of sale. Mm -hmm. We have a strategy. We uh, want to be uh, more focused into premium and to be able, uh, such a house like Taylor's, who does 3 million bottles, so 3% of the activities, the brand Taylor's. So we need to have a strategy for that. And of course, uh, uh, outside uh, England, continental Europe, the markets I am responsible, we need to have... Uh, a circuit of distribution focused on the, on premium and traditional distribution. So wine shop, restaurants, wholesales um, are uh, the universe that we want to 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 reach. So organizing uh, uh, such a uh, events like this one tonight uh, online or or presentially, it's for us uh, uh, important because. To explain the difference of a bottle of port who costs between 20, 30 euros to someone who maybe is used to buy it under 10 euros, but we want him to buy our bottle, we need to explain this. And the only way to do that is by tasting and being connected with the wine shop, restaurants, sommeliers, who also can pass the message, <coughs> be ambassadors, mm -hmm. I hope. I will certify that all of you become Taylor's ambassadors uh, tonight and uh, uh, to be able to to be to understand all this difference. So 
uh, just on a, on a bottom line of strategy, this is what we do, and uh, we do this uh, mostly. We work for 70 countries in the world. I'm about responsible of uh, maybe 10 countries, and this is what we do in those in those countries. So uh, thank you again for your interest, and uh, and uh, I, I, I go forward. Uh, I will go for the brand, the house. Mm -hmm. Taylor's is a house like you see on the labels existing six, since 1692, still a family family business. And I'll, uh, I'll just share the first uh, slide of your slide. Uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thank so you very much. This is, this is it, uh, 1692. Uh, and today under the roof, like you mentioned, the Floodgate Partnership, which is the company who, who, ha who has the roof of uh, the several port wine houses that we have, which are also distributed by Sinoco, which is uh, Taylor's, Fonseca, and uh, and the Croft. We are maybe today the only one only doing port wine, fortified wine. Mm -hmm. I will try to explain uh, afterwards the reasons of that when we get to the Doro. Mm -hmm. So Taylor's uh, uh, also the uh, is a very strong brand in uh, in premium categories. And also, altogether, the Floodgate Partnership, we are responsible for one third of all what we call special categories. So, premium ports, one third of the, 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 all the premium ports sold all over the world are our responsibility. Okay. So, this is also an argument. Uh, 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 two arguments only focus on port wine because it shows that we are really specialist and of course the result of it is by selling uh, being responsible for the selling of one third of everything which is special category so special category is late bottle vintage old tonies, reserve tonies, uh, vintage port all those, everything except what we call the ruby, uh, the tawny and the white, that are considered standards, but premium, uh, collatage, which we don't do, but it's a special category also. Well, collata basically means like vintage years, right? Uh, collata, it's a tawny port of a single year. A single year, yeah. And the collate in Portuguese means harvest. Mm -hmm. And then it's two definitions, vintage port for the ones aging in the bottle and collate for single year, but aging in the cask before it's uh, bottle, okay. minimum seven years. So all this uh, uh, represents the, the, um, the special categories, which Taylor's is uh, in, a, in, a, in a front row. We are still a family business. Uh, it is the 13th generation representing, uh, uh, let's say, uh, passing the secrets from one generation to the others, where you um, you can have uh, uh, keep on the quality and uh, and uh, of the of the pickup of the of the grapes. So I think also this is a detail. Port wine, as you know, it's a product with a lot of. Uh, uh, history and a lot of stories at the same time. And uh, we can say a lot about it. So transmitting it from generation to generation, I think it's an asset that uh, is very important for for, um, for port wine. Luis, so, maybe, um, yes. um, is it a good idea if we uh, pour the, for the first port already so people have something to taste already? Very good. Uh, I, I'm very talkative, so before <laughs> you get sleep, it's better to start to taste uh, a, a wine. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> uh, we are starting with the chip dry. Correct. It's a white port. And uh, so it leads us to the Doro Valley immediately, which is, I don't know if some of you already visited it. Um, uh, the, the Doro Valley it's something that when uh, you expect to see agriculture, when you expect to produ produce something from the soil, you are expecting to see something flat. 
but thank you for the picture of uh, the Vince because oh, this is the picture, very nice picture of uh, uh, one of our main in Quinta. So when we talk about production from the soil, agriculture uh, or vines, we expect something which is flat. So the Douro Valley immediately you go something totally different because everything is inclinated. It's what we call mountain agriculture. So uh, uh, the first wine uh, we are tasting, it's of course from white grapes, uh, a white port, uh, and we use normally three different types of grape varieties, but most of it, more over than 90%, it's a, a, a grape variety that we find all over Mediterranean uh, coast, which is Malvasie Fina, in French Malvoisie. You find it, it's a very reliable grape variety. You find it from uh, Greece to, uh, to uh, Madeira Islands. In, Made in Madeira, and, uh, they call it Malmsey, I think, in yes, English. Yes, correct. And, uh, and, but the thing is, in the Douro Valley, white grape, uh, mostly it's planted over 400 meters altitude because uh, we don't want uh, much heat as the white grape doesn't have the same need of maturity as, as the red grape. So we plant it mostly uh, uh, over 400 meters. And um, we don't own any white grapes. We only own uh, uh, red grapes. We buy it mostly from Douro Superior, the eastern part next to Spain. And, uh, and uh, uh, again, over 400 meters of altitude. The two other grape varieties are uh, Octocton, uh, with the Portuguese name, of course, Viuzinho uh, Govaio, and uh, they bring acidity. So you have from, uh, from the Malvasia, the reliable, the fruitiness, a little bit exotic fruits, maybe pineapple, and then the aging of the wine, which is four years, a blend aging in big, big vats, wooden vats, 60,000 liters, 80,000 liters. It brings this honey taste, which is a level of oxidation on, uh, on, um, on, on the wine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, and of course, the vinification of the sheep dry, you know, uh, fortifying we, uh, the big difference between a red, a white wine, a dry white wine and port wine, the big difference, it's time of fermentation. Uh, for dry wine, we let all the sugar transform into alcohol until the yeast die and they, they transform every sugar, uh, every sugar into alcohol. For port, we want to keep natural sugar. So we need to provoke a, a stop fermentation. So we do it after three days, 72 hours. We stop the, the, the fermentation by adding spirits distilled from wine, from grapes, which is entitled at 77 uh, alcohol percentage of volume of alcohol. And uh, so, uh, um, and then we get the level of sugar. For sheep dry, what we do is we let fermentation go a little bit further on, so we have less sugar. Because normally for port, the classic level of sugar for port, normally you are between 90 grams to 100 grams altogether. But the classic fine white, it's about 90 grams. Extra dry port normally goes to 30 grams, so three times less. It brings a bit more complexity. It gives it more wine side to the wine. This product was created in the 30s, in 1930s, for a demand because sherry was business was going down. And as you know, sherry is dry. So they, they, there was some request of more dry uh, fortified wine. And uh, um, actually, sheep dry was the first to be in the market. So this and, was the uh, first white port wine created. Yeah, dr uh, dry white port, dry white dry port in the 1930s, in the beginning of 1930s, where we let fermentation go a little bit further on 
to have less uh, natural sugar uh, mm -hmm. in it. So uh, a certain complexity, I like it. But and there's course, already uh, there's already a tasting note in uh, in the chat. So uh, please, everybody, if you do have uh, tasting notes, if you do have something to say about the the wines we're tasting, please put them in the chat. Uh, every reaction is good. Um, so Mark is saying delicate nose on fresh, summery, and juicy yellow fruits, and some earthy notes, fresh and lively on the palate, with mostly pineapple and a nice acidity. And he loves it on the rocks with tonic and a basil yeah, leaf. Exactly, exactly. I was going to mention about it. So the pineapple, it def definitely it's the influence of the Malvasia, mm -hmm. who brings this aromatic, easy, easy fruit. But then you have a lens, you have a, a, a certain complexion and persistence. And this shows uh, 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 that the... Um, uh, uh, this shows that um, I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, uh, to go to go further, indeed, when you add it with the tonic, you make the pot tonic, basilic or mint <laughs> with lemon. It's uh, something very nice, uh, let's say more seasonal, definitely, but very enjoyable when you are thirsty. And actually, let me add it. We are not tasting, but we already we. Uh, we were very, very um, there and looking to the future and looking to new consumption. We already set up a pre-mix in a can, uh, Taylor's Sheep Drive tonic water already, uh, called a, a, a ready to drink. So that's something uh, that Sinoco can, can uh, get it, it's available. And uh, it's something we are trying to push, but we think we are a little bit ahead our time. Mm -hmm. I confess, I like to do the cocktail myself, like uh, the comment of Mark. If you, if you uh, really don't want to do the work yourself, you have if the, you are the, lazy, the can let's go for the can, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Didier is adding, you can also use ginger beer, uh, question mark? Uh, uh, never tried it, but uh, why not? <laughs> You know, we are open minded, very traditional with uh, 330 years of existence, uh, but we are open mind uh, people. So everything uh, uh, for me, the most important is you like it or you don't like it. Yeah. That's uh, for me, the quality of the, the product. So uh, Jordi, Jordi wants to know, uh, Luis, what is the recommended drinking temperature for this one? If you don't mix it, if you drink it like this? Cold, cold temperature, fridge, door at the fridge, six, nine degrees should be better. And as you know, and uh, Jens, if, Jürgen, if you can ask, open, uh, if you can show to open the bottle and close the bottle, you see it's a, it's a, it's a bar top. You see it's a bar top. So all port wines that you see with a bar top like this, it mm -hmm. means that the wines, when they are bottled, they are ready to drink. There will be no more evolution. And mm -hmm. for the sheep dry, when you open the bottle, you can keep it for four to six weeks. And the wine will always keep its organoleptic characteristics of fruitiness, acidity, and, uh, and, uh, and the taste and color. Everything will be uh, the same. So mm -hmm. this is recommendation. And we keep the bottle standing up. Yeah, no I saw that on the label. The um, keep the, store the bottle upright. Yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely. So before going to the next, if there is no more comments with the sheep dry, I think it's a lovely wine. Mm -hmm. I had it once with a French journalist. We take, took it with scallops. Uh, oh, yeah. Scallops with uh, a little bit under, under the truffle uh, taste. And okay. uh, sheep dry went very well, if you want to be originally. Uh, uh, but... Let's say that white port normally, classically, it's a wine to be tasted in aperitif with olive oils, with grid, uh, grilled almonds, mm. with something, uh, uh, with a good company, most of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do food pairing, do company pairing, do friend pairing. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Very good. Well said. Uh, I never <laughs> use that expression. I will do, I will use it if you want. I don't me. think, uh, of course, I don't think it existed before tonight. So there, there you go. You can have it. <laughs> okay. Uh, just before going to the next wine, yeah. I would love to talk a little bit about Tudoro. So mm -hmm. because we went very, very quickly to the Doro, and I mentioned uh, uh, mountain agriculture. So that makes that region 
unique. You can go anywhere in the planet, but you will never see a, a, a viti, viticulturist, viti, vini, vini, viti vini region with such a, 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 a dimension of everything inclinated where human effort, human effort to be able to build that is colossal. Mm -hmm. Because you know, bulldozer, the machine only arrived in the, in the 60s, but we are here over uh, uh, the, the wine region, it's from 1756. So uh, I think, you, you know, when you have a definition of terroir, I find five characteristics for definition of terroir. Climate, soil, grape variety, human intervention, mm -hmm. and the knowledge of that human who knows how to deal with the, with the challenge. So this definition, terroir is just not a location. It's all these five combinations. And by this picture, you can see that the Doro Valley it's you can go all around the planet and will you will not find such a crazy such a crazy place i call it very crazy because i, I was i was just thinking i was just thinking louise that if you uh, if you were like uh, living in that area in the 17th century you must have really needed a drink if you started uh, growing wine <laughs> drink and, and a lot of muscles and, and a, a lot, lot of, of muscles, muscles. Yeah. <laughs> But I agree with you. So uh, going to, uh, to the terroir definition, the Douro Valley has a very hot and dry climate. Pluviosity is very low and temperature are very high. And then you have a soil, like you can see in the picture, which yeah, is uh, uh, stony. If you Exactly, look at this soil. This is not a fertile soil. If you want to plant a, a, pota a potato or a tomato, 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 potato, potato. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot plant in in such a soil because this is rocky soil, mm -hmm. very poor. It's schistous, and uh, uh, which when when uh, phylloxera happened at the end of the 19th century, um, of course the the vines were totally devastated all over Europe. The only thing we could plant in the Douro Valley was olive trees and almond trees because they were the only who could create some roots, long roots to be able to catch uh, water to, to survive. And you know, schist, it's a stone with a lot of fissures. And we have the luck that the nature in the Douro Valley all over the position of the fissure of the, the schist, it's vertical. And sorry, it means that the roots of the vines, they go under the soil 30 meters to be able to reach water and minerals so they can survive so, to such a hard climate, which is hot and, and, and low level of, of rain, uh, so they can survive. And they can only go, and they go to 30 meters, which is quite a lot, and to be create a certain resistance. And they only can go because the, the stone uh, is positioned vertically, so they can go inside the fissures and go down to be able to, to survive in such a, such a region. So it makes it really completely different than any other region completely uh, 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 unique, unique. Mm -hmm. So climate, hot, dry, soil, very, very poor. And then we arrive to the grape varieties, uh, which needs to be resistant uh, for the reasons I explained. And even now we talk a lot about climate change and, uh, and uh, the, the, the overheat temperature we live uh, all over the planet. We, in the Douro, we don't have a problem of temperature because temperature, we get it. Every summer in August, you can get 40. July, August, you can get over 40. Of course, not all the time, but peaks of one, two, three days of the peaks. But what is important for us, it's the minimum temperature. And an example of 2003, as you know, you are wine shops, you sold that uh, vintage. 
it, it was a very hot summer all over Europe. And to produce wine in 2003 was a, a nightmare because there was too much maturity, too much sugar, and not, not much acidity. And, uh, and that was a problem, not for port. And in the Douro Valley in 2003, for three weeks, the minimum temperature was 33 degrees, 33. And the maximum was 37, 35, 37, but the minimum never went down. For me, this is when there is no thermic amplitude, it means canicule, canicula. This is where you have canicula. And in Odoro, that was a, a, a phenomenon of canicula. And 2003 uh, came out to have a state sanity of the grapes, homogeneity all over the region, which made a perfect, and the vintage, which is now 20 years now, uh, it is, for Port, was an outstanding, magnificent year. So we are a little bit opposite and this mm -hmm. is one of the reasons we focus on port wine, because we believe in the Douro Valley. And this is why we don't do dry wines, because with all this definition of the terroir of the Douro, we think port wine has the combination to complete the, the, the definition of, uh, of, uh, of terroir. So uh, this chapter of the Douro, which I finish now, I think it's important to understand that we are totally different than uh, any other regions. Mm -hmm. Just one detail for uh, treatments of the, of the vegetation, the threats we get, you know, we do uh, uh, maybe three, four times less treatment that champagne does because they are much more fertile, they're much more rainfall uh, region. Yeah, we yeah, are yeah. the opposite. So. You see, we do maybe half of the treatment that the Bordeaux, which is half distance, equidistance between Champagne and the Douro Valley. Bordeaux, we do maybe half of the stabilization, although we have mildew, we have oidium, but the threat is not so high as those, mm -hmm. as those regions. So it's really the Douro Valley and port wine. That's why I work for the company for 24 years. And I don't get tired to explain this fasc fascinating situation because it's a unique place. It's unique. So no more about Toro. Otherwise, we stay here <laughs> until tomorrow morning. <laughs> we can go to the next wine if you want. Yes, that uh, sounds good. If everybody's happy, I don't know if my speech is okay for everybody. Nobody's yes? complaining, uh, Luis. So I think so far, everybody's happy. Very good. <laughs> I think we're going to the fine tawny now. Fine Tony, next wine. So, which is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the, the port most uh, consumed in general. Uh, it's the most sold. It's a standard category. It's a wine three years old. Uh, uh, it's value for money. Uh, as you see, bar top. So, it's a wine who, who, who matured, aged in contact with the wood. And the definition of Tony in English meaning... Uh, a uh, brick, uh, 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 ochre color, uh, uh, amber, amber color. Uh, it shows that it's a wine who has a certain influence of the wood and the oxygen. So it has an oxidation side, and this is what we call Tony. Although, although, frankly speaking, for me, a Tony three years old, it's a contradiction mm -hmm. because three years old it makes much more sense to stay in the ruby style. It's young, it's primary, it's fruity. It's to still also more, tone, more red in color than exactly. brownish. And yeah. When we will taste the 10 years old, you will see a huge, huge difference. But I, I put it as a second because it's an evolution of complexity of the wine. But afterwards, eventually, uh, you, and you can put the two, <coughs> two glasses together and you can see the difference of the color yep. or everybody can see the difference of the color. So it's a product for us, we do it. Uh, although it's not our strategy, it's for matured markets, uh, which consume a lot of port, but uh, low ends. It's for us to put the foot on the door and to be able to enter, make business. But our strategy immediately will be 
uh, okay, you like Tony, but taste 10 years old, and then you decide what to buy. Or you mm. buy 10 years, or you buy fine Tony. This is what we want to do with such a product. Mm -hmm. In terms of tastes, it's round, it's balanced, alcohol, sugar, acidity, level, quite balanced, but with not much complexity. You have little flavors, maybe raisins, but it's very round, sweety, and easy drink, let's mm -hmm. say. I don't think there is much to say, but it's always a good way. And Belgium, it's a very matured market. Huh? You are, I have a surprise slide at the end. I will show you some statistics of all the countries of ports, which I left to show it. And you will be very surprised uh, what's happening in Belgium. So this is one of the products very much sold in Belgium. And uh, our job is really to upgrade, to go to go to 10 years old and premium, premium pools. Mm -hmm. Okay, after, if, if there is no comment about fine Tony. Yeah, there's, a, there's again a nice, a nice tasting note uh, from Mark. Uh, soft nose on fresh berries, butterscotch figs and plums intertwined with a handful of nuts and soft herbs on the palate. This involves into a real strawberry jam. Finish is round and sweet. I prefer to drink this one when it has first spent an hour or two in the basement at about 14 degrees with a piece of Roquefort or Stilton at the end of a satisfying meal. <laughs> Mark, you use uh, all your uh, adjectives and uh, thing. Uh, you, don't, you will not have anything else for the other wines. <laughs> no, no, but Mar Mark is our resident poet. So, uh... <laughs> you have you must have a long list of adjectives for uh, for the other wines. <laughs> oh yeah, don't don't tempt him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good. So it's a good compliment about the wine because I I put it more in a simple level, but to have uh, this uh, this taste and this opinion, it's uh, it makes it uh, in a it puts him in a good position. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think also, uh, Louise, that this kind of Tony port is what a lot of people that are not in the drinks business or not on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, thinking exactly. about drinks. This is yeah. what they will know and what they will associate with port wine. This is what we call uh, here in France, which is the biggest market for port, and mostly over 70% of the port sold in France, it's Tony. It's what everyone calls Le Petit Porto. Uh, that's the, the name for, uh, for it. It's mm -hmm. this, uh, you know, it's the tradition in the old times, in a little glass, just have it. And uh, like that, uh, and not with, uh, you know, with the complexity of the yeah. one. But I'm not saying it's bad or you should not do it. No, you should do it if you want to do it. But uh, we would like to show alternatives to that. But yeah. that still is the uh, a product we, we and we, we, we sell it, of course. We sell yeah, it. Yeah, sure. And I guess the price point is also very interesting on yeah, this. So very interesting. Definitely, definitely. I don't, I don't have the... the Belgian sales prices here with me, but uh, uh, you can get them with Sinoco, of course. Uh, Sinoco, I think in uh, in consumer price uh, with the fine Tony in a wine shop, I think you would be, if not mistaken, around uh, the 12 euros, 12 to 14 euros, maybe, you know, in a general view. She I would dry, expect something. Else. You would be uh, 18 to 20 euros, let's say, consumer price. Eh? Yeah, consumer yeah, 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 sure. Consumer yeah. price. So before going to the next one, which is LBV, uh, just to talk, so I talk about the brand, I talked about the region, I talked about the terroir. Uh, let's talk about vinification. So mm -hmm. vinification, you know, harvest is in September. When the grape gets the level of maturity we, we, we enjoy, and uh, and then everything is picked up by hand because machine cannot go into those terraces as you as you could see so again human effort to do it and um, in the old times i think it's a detail because for me it's a, an argument of quality in old times uh, port wine was made um, the vinification of port wine in general was made by what we call technically system remontage. So you have an inox cube close to oxygen. You put the grapes inside. 
because it's close uh, to uh, to the air, the the ferment the, the starting of combustion, uh, carbonic gas fermentation starts uh, starts fermentation, and with a pump we would put up the liquid so the juice would go down <coughs> in the cube to be in contact with the skin to make extraction. We tailors don't do that anymore because that is. Uh, the, uh, until the 2000, we did like that, but now we use open air cubes, inox, but open air with hydraulic pistons where mechanically they press the grapes. So they want to reproduce the same system as the traditional vinification, which is the foot trodden that we still do for vintage port. All the grapes from our properties, we have three properties, Vergelas, Terra Feita, Junco, all those grapes are still foot trodden because we think technically, as we only have three days of fermentation, we have to optimize the work of extraction of aromas and colors. Technically speaking, foot trodden still is the best, but we had a gap of the foot trodden and system remontage. And now with the hydraulic pistons, we are much, much close to the foot trodden and we can create a much better quality of extraction and uh, 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 with, all, with those uh, machines. So we, are, we do that since 20 years now, over 20 years, a new concept created by us. And that for me, we at, uh, immediately we are a, a level higher uh, in terms of quality. Quality. Uh, and are you are you the only ones to use this system, or are, are you this kind of system? Yes, but there are others who use kind of robotics in the traditional recipients mm -hmm. to press the grapes. Okay. But this concept in a, we have a big winery where we can uh, vinify uh, over a hundred tons of grapes in 24 hours so which is quite uh, quite huge but to maintain the level of quality and that's a, a, a detail the other houses use it more in a traditional way more res restrained way but with a, a, such a dimension uh, maybe one two producers one us one more maybe one more would use uh, also the same uh, the same system mm. of uh, vinification which is very important. The other thing, I explain uh, fortified uh, uh, vinification, the difference, but the other thing, it's the spirit we use for vinification. We have been studying the spirit for many, many years, decades, and we buy, we are allowed to buy the spirit anywhere we want. Mm -hmm. Until the 90s, it was the regulator, the Port Wine Institute, who would say you have to buy to this supplier, unique supplier, to every uh, to everyone. Since the 90s, you can buy everywhere. And we start to study the qualities and try to find the best place. Portugal is not a big distiller. We're mm -hmm. not specialists in distillation, uh, but we have some uh, coming of it. But we find the quality actually is in France, you know, in Cognac region, we find the best quality spirit to to uh, to use because you know 20% of the volume that you have in your glass it's spirit mm -hmm. 550 liters of port 440 it's port fortified or, or, or fermented must 110 it's spirit that we add so it's 20% of the volume so you, it's very important to have a good quality spirit to be able to well integrate it to the wine to be able to feel the freshness and the aromas, the aromas of the port. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is for me the the uh, some characteristics of of the of the vinification. We can go to the next wine if you wish. Yes, the late bottled vintage LBV two thousand seventeen. Yes. Is before commenting, is everybody happy with the explanation? Yeah. Going I see well? people nodding, so very good. Yeah. 
Very good. So now, now we talk serious stuff, uh, late bottle vintage. Late bottle vintage, I say serious stuff because it's half percent of the sales of Taylor's. 50% of the 3 million bottles is late bottle vintage. Wow. Where England is uh, our biggest market. We are leaders uh, in England because of the late bottle vintage. That's why if you are in a neighborhood in Belgium where you have English tourists, you, you only need to have a Taylor's bottle in your shop because the, the English tourist will definitely want to drink a glass of port. And when he see Taylor's, he goes, he goes for it. So it's, it's for us very, very important category. And, uh, and by the tasting, immediately you see the level because we really go up in the level of tasting here in terms of organoleptic. We feel tannins, we feel complexity, the sherry, the plummy fruit, the the with a with a, with a, with a, with a, a little bit of a evolution, but most of all, a lot of freshness, a good acidity. The wine holds on, uh, uh, and uh, that's that's really a category of wine yeah. that we are we are very proud because we do a lot of it, but we maintain the standards of quality very very high. And and also, Mark is asking the question that I'll, I also wrote down to ask is you, you actually started with LBV uh, at Taylor's exactly. in, well in 1970. Done. Uh, Mark knows uh, he, he studied the lesson before the tasting, uh, true, because the creator of the late bottle vintage was Taylor's. And I will, you will allow me uh, three, five minutes, no more, <laughs> to tell the story, maybe in that much. And it was definitely launched in 97 with the vintage 65 uh, five years after and this was the the the, the still is still alive the owner of uh, the floodgate partner, partnership alistair robertson in the 60s he was in london in a restaurant and the restaurateur told him look vintage port outstanding wine the best port you can get but when you open a bottle of vintage port, you have to drink it. The yeah. service has to be done immediately. And that it's complicated for the, for the restaurant to be able to pass a bottle of vintage port uh, uh, in, in restoration. It would be great to find a, a port wine with vintage characteristics, but that we could pour by the glass. So Alistair went back to Porto and sat down and he said, okay, the guy wants a wine with vintage characteristics. So I keep a vintage year. I don't plant it. I just keep the vintage year. But instead of bottling it after two years, like we do for vintage port, I will bottle it after five years. So the wine is more in contact with the air and the, and the wood and gets a natural stabilization. So you can open and close the bottle and the wine will be, is used to live with the, with the air. Mm -hmm. This is how LBV was created. And the first wine to be uh, trade, commercialized, was Taylor's uh, late bottle vintage 65, uh, launched in 1970. So correct, Mark, well done to know, to know that detail. Because so it's, for us, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's an uh, argument and an asset of of the house. Yeah. And so it was now, it was it was actually a, a deliberate. Uh, it was made with intent. I mean, it was a it deliberate move. It was not uh, cast of vintage that were forgotten. To make any uh, to satisfy a demand, okay. which was to have a wine with good quality characteristics, such as a vintage, but that you can pour by the glass. Yeah. that you can keep the bottle between four to six weeks and you can pour it and uh, the quality is always there. And, and can you now, make a, sorry, sorry, can you make a late bottled vintage from any vintage year or, or do they have yes, to be like can. the vintage it's a years? Rotational year. We didn't, we didn't do it. The only vintage that I know and, I, I, and for the last 50 years that I know, it's 1993 
because it was such a bad year. It rained during all September that there was no quality at all in production. That year, we didn't even do um, a late bottle vintage. Okay. So normally, late bottle vintage, it's a rotational wine. We yeah, produce yeah. it every year. If there is a jump from uh, one year to another, it's because the market didn't uh, go with it. And when he started to order again, he, he went to the other to the mm. other the following vintage. But it's a rotational year wine. Yes, correct. Because for but, the for the for the real real between brackets vintages, it's only when they are declared a vintage year that you can make a vintage port, right? Exactly. So uh, for vintage ports, and uh, maybe we can talk it about now. But first of all, let just me understate that we are not only the creators of LBV, but also after 50 years, because the the it was 50 years in 2020. Uh, <clears throat> it was 50 years of the creation of the of of or the sale of the first LBV. Not only. We created, but we kept the level of quality very high. I think this is even more important for me. So vintage port is only produced when the quality of the year is very good, when the, the grapes are uh, in an in a, a excellent result of maturity and sanity. No disease, no threat, nothing, where you can get an homogeneity all over the region so not only you pick up grapes from your estate, but you also can pick up from some suppliers. You can do a vintage port without supply, although we do ours only from our grapes. Mm -hmm. But we have Quinta de Vagelas, and then we have Terra Feita and Junco, which are a little bit spread. So when the year is very good on those three spots, the mixing up creates of the grapes creates the great vintage. Mm -hmm. That's when you see on the label only the, the name of the house, Taylor's Vintage Port, mm -hmm. 2018, 2017, 2016, 2011, 2009, 2007, 2003, 2000. For the last 23 years, we did eight Taylor's Vintage, classic, we call it classic. Only the name of the house, we blend the grapes from the state and because of that homogeneity of that quality, we made the outstanding vintage port. Mm -hmm. Classic declaration. The other years, as the grape is good but didn't reach the quality we want, and the mixing of the grapes with the state doesn't bring more because in Vergel it was better than Terra Feita or in Terra Feita it was better than Vergel. There is not a balance. Then, but we like the grapes. Then we bottle what we call single Quinta Vintage. Mm -hmm. You see the name of the house, Taylor's, and then below the name of the estate. That shows that the year was good, but not excellent. 2001, 2002, 2004, 2005, 2008, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2019, and 2020. For the last 23 years, we did, we did 10 single quinta vintage. So you see, for the last 23 years, we did 10 single Quinton and eight classic vintage, 18 vintages. Yeah. So for the 2006, 2010, 2016, and 2021, so four vintage, we will not bottle. Uh, actually, yesterday, it was a very important day for the house because it's St. George Day, mm -hmm. and it's when we decide decide when we are going to do a vintage or not. The tasting panel gets uh, uh, together, although yesterday was Sunday, so maybe <laughs> they did it on Friday. But uh, but uh, uh, the 23rd 
it's the, the, the decision, either we do a tailors or we do a single quinta or we don't do anything. And, and yes, and this, well, I think it was Friday uh, because I, I, I'm not in the office. Uh, uh, I actually, I have to admit I'm on holiday. So you see, you are, <laughs> you are privileged tonight. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I, I'm not, I wasn't aware, but I knew that they are, uh, were going not to uh, announce any vintage. So very important to see that uh, opposite to the wine, because mm -hmm. if you go to Burgundy or to, uh, you go to the parcel, le parcelaire, you go just to the restriction to make the best wine. Port, it's the opposite. Port, you want to blend it, grape varieties, region, everything to create the best. As we are in the, such a sinuous, such a, a, a microclimate, uh, uh, altitudes and everything, the best way is to blend uh, the product. So uh, vintage port, we have two different labels to distinguish one year to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to the other, which is also... And, and of course, the value, the, the price is, is also, different. also different. I, I hope I was not too technical, uh, but uh, it's important that uh, one thing is declaration and the other thing, it's just vintage. Yeah. I'll go back to the late bottle vintage. Mark has yes. written a, a really nice tasting note again. I won't read it all. I will just read you the last sentence. It's wow, just wow. Very good. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think it's a, it's a wine. Uh, the quality level is also so being a rotational wine and being a wine five years in the big vat. The characteristics of the vintage year loses a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Are, are like it, a, it, a 17 and 18? It's always the same quality. It's consistent. Yeah. It's consistent. But one thing is true. When we don't do any vintage port, what we are going to do with the wine? And the wine goes, of course, to the breakdown of to the to the reserve. Mm -hmm. So goes who benefits a lot? It's LBV. So you see LBV 14, LBV 10, LBV 6. I'm sure there would be, I don't remember now, but they could get better wines because they had. Because there's no vintages, vintage, yeah, yeah. Potential vintage didn't happen, but which for LBV would be great. So, mm -hmm. um, so, but okay. so the the vintage year is not so important as it is for vintage port. Vintage port, it's really the year, or is uh, like yeah. 2003. I mentioned to you, for me, it's one of my favorites. I have two favorites. I'm in the house since '99. So my first declaration was 97. It was at Taylor's. My favorite is three and 17. I think it's the classic, pure uh, terroir, uh, terroir uh, wine. And I talked a lot about 2003. So, um, uh, uh, nice. so I talk the, about the vinification and the, the spirits. Uh, I think we can go to the other wine, if you wish. Yes, I think the next one is the, the most... Uh... Um, the one that strikes the eye the most with the wooden box, the reserve tawny. Correct. It's there is a story because we call it historical connection, and uh, at Taylor's Lodge, uh, which uh, it's open to visit, you can visit, more than welcome. We have a place where we we store and we show original uh, bottle production since the 17th century, since the house, the existence of the house. So it came out to the idea to make a special blend. It's a reserve Tony of seven years old, unique only for this special limited edition of historical collection. So we started with in uh, 2017 with a bottle uh, which was produced in the same year as the foundation of the house. And this is the, the third edition. And it is the first bottle who got vertical cylindric aspect, vertical cylindric, 
<clears throat> like we are, like the bottles are in the back of, uh, of uh, Johan. This is the mm. first model where you could control the shape of the bottle. And this bottle is from 1750. Okay. So, uh, and, uh, and so we decided to, to make a nice package. It's a nice gift bag. Now it's Father's Day is coming now in May, uh, all these events. And it's a nice thing to, to, to sell with a good value for money also. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the story. The wine, it's a, it's a unique blend which we produce only for that edition. And it's a seven years old, so reserve, Tony. And if you taste it, it gets quince. You know quince? Mm -hmm. Marmelade. Quiberen in, in Dutch. Quiberen. Yeah. exactly. And uh, good freshness also. Some, uh, some plummy, very ripe plummy. But for me, it's really um, quince. Quiberen. 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 I think. And again, good lands, good acidity. Uh, this is a Tony. Now we are talking about Tony, Tony wines. And uh, you can see the difference between the fine Tony and the reserve Tony. Yeah, the difference is, is very striking. There's much more complexity. Um, what I was just wondering about, so this is the third edition of the reserve Tony. Yes. Are they always the same profile or are they very different same profile, from each other? Same profile, reserve Tony, but a unique blend. So the wine yeah. can be a little bit different from mm -hmm. one to the other because a specific blend was done to which bottles. Okay, okay. Chris says it's his kind of uh, tawny port. Yes, <laughs> yeah, then, then uh, 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 Chris, um, you're saying something very important, which you know, uh, we already now know to distinguish between uh, uh, Ruby style and Tony style. Ruby because it ages in these big vats, uh, and Tony because it ages in barrels. So one is more oxidized than the other. One is more reductive, the other is more uh, uh, oxidized. Here it is. The, 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 the vat that you see at the end, it's a vat who has a hundred thousand liters. Wow. The area of that vat, it's 54 square meter. It's so like huge. a small apartment. In like a small uh, studio in the best uh, uh, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so there is so much wine in it that the contact with the wood and the air is very weak, very low. So ruby style. And then in the barrels that you see, of course, there are more or less 600 liters barrel. Of course, the contact with the air and the barrel and the wood is more important. Mm -hmm. And then it's a question of taste. This is for me the most important. When someone comes to your one shop and said, I want a port. I think the first question to ask to the client is, which is your style? Are you more Tony style or Ruby style? And then he says, oh, uh, I'm more fruity style. Then we go to late bottle vintage. Oh no, I'm more licorice style. I like the port that my grandmother used to drink. Tony style, no doubt about it. So you see, mm. it's that is that is a good way to focus to go directly to the taste of uh, your client. Mm -hmm. Is there much difference between each cask, of each barrel uh, of, of aging, or is it yes. uh, of a, of of uh, of continents of volume or um... now, like, flavor wise? I mean, is is ah, every no. barrel very different, no. or are they all? No, kind of... no uh, more or less the same. And uh, but uh, what's important to say also it's that we don't use new wood. We mm. only we the the recipients are really to store the wine. The 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 style of the wine is getting with the age. We don't need to refine the wine like we do for um, for dry wines. So. The barrels that you see in the, in the picture, they are a hundred years old barrels. The average of our wood uh, stock altogether, it's it's a it's a centenary uh, uh, stock. The average years wow. old. Average, average. We have we have vats with two hundred years old. Okay. 
Okay. But they are cleaned up, they are treated. We have coopers who mm -hmm. take care of it. And, uh, and uh, when we need to buy wood, we try to buy already used, not to buy new one. Uh, that uh, uh, wineries that they want to get rid of it, we, we buy them. Okay. But we, we bought a lot 20 years ago. Now I think we are totally satisfied with our needs. For our how, how many of these casks have you got lying around? On this warehouse, only on this warehouse that you see, we have 1,000 barrels here. Okay. So yeah. altogether, poof, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, port wine, it's under a quota and a capacity. And uh, uh, when we talk about pipes, we, we are talking about an official measure, an official volume, which is 550 liters. Mm -hmm. And I think the capacity of the Floodgate partnership is around 20,000 pipes. So, okay. but in between pipes and vats and everything, so yeah. it means about 10, that, 10 million liters. Yeah, exactly. So it means that um, altogether we would have 20,000 of these pipes. Yeah. Okay. So we have a few, but we are not the biggest. Huh? We are mm. in, in, uh, in volume. We are the third company. Uh, in, vol in volume, we are the third company. Uh, but in value, we are the second but in average price per bottle, we are first company okay. because we are premium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Mark uh, already says also very tempting, round and soft on the tongue with toffee. I agree. I mm. agree. It's long finish. Yes. Cheese, definitely. Cheese or dry fruits. Also, if you want to go on dessert. Mm -hmm. And chocolate for me. Always yes. chocolate. With Dark chocolate, definitely. Oh. Definitely. So next wine. Yes, the 10-year-old. 10 years old. So I think in terms of category of ports, and when we are talking about value for money and Tony style, this is it. I think uh, 10 years old. So... When you see um, an age in a label, it means an average. It doesn't mean a minimum or a maximum. It's an average. It means that we can use younger wines or older wines to make the blend. What's important, it's always to try to obtain the same taste, always the same taste. With younger wines, all the wines managing our stock res reserve. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, 10 years, it's actually the best way to manage your stock because you don't use a lot of old wines. So you can preserve your wine reserve to age uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, longer, longer. Here, nutty, raisins, mm. round, Fruity, elegant. Yeah, even uh, a lot, a lot more, more than the than the reserve tawny. I would say the reserve oh, tawny has more, more of the fruitiness. More, this more. is much more uh, of the of those typical even, nutty raisiny flavors. Yeah. Even reserve tawny is a little bit um, is a little bit dry. This is a little bit more sweety, more round, more mm -hmm. comfortable, more. Um, I'm Why are? A, I'm going to put a light to see to be less darker. Just yes. a moment. Yes. I don't know if it will be better. I don't know if you do. Otherwise, if you have a, a light, you will meet. Uh, uh, you, I, I'm. Uh, I will be the ghost, Louise from Taylor's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking to us from the cellars of France. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Luis, why are these the ten-year-old and the twenty-year-old are in uh, are in this frosted glass? Question of uh, 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 decoration, showing that we are talking about high high level 
more yeah. comfortable in the touch, more luxury. So, so there's uh, no there's no flavor. Uh, no, 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 no. It's thing behind and, it. And, uh, you know, comparing to the other bottles shows that there is more, maybe more contact with the wood. I don't know. There's there's uh, a lot of things. But it's yeah, yeah the frosted the, the frosted bottles. It's uh, we only do that for uh, eight tonnies. Okay. I also see on every bottle you have by appointment to uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II suppliers of port wine. So you are uh, suppliers well, of the she, royal. She had a long life. I'm sure mm -hmm. she was drinking a lot of Taylors. So yeah. it's a good example to follow. <laughs> and uh, but uh, since since uh, uh, last week. Or this week because it will be on the 6th of may we are uh, all we became also uh, 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 a warrant of king charles and okay. for king charles coronation which will be the 6th of may we uh, we made a very special edition what we call a very very old port yeah i read it yeah uh, yeah the coronation limited edition uh, I, I suggested to um, Stefan, but I think he's also on holidays. But I'm sure you will take some for for Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you live in a civilized uh, country. You are a monkey. <laughs> I live in a republic, so they don't understand this kind of uh, important <laughs> things. And uh, so uh, we we follow up this uh, royal warrants, which is you know shows that we are in a in uh, our products respect a certain level. You know, a yep. royal warrant, you need to follow uh, um, cahier de charge. Mm -hmm. You have to have uh, a lot of uh, aspects of, yep. a, of a company in all aspects so you can really get uh, uh, that royal warrant. So it's not anyone. Who no, can, and I, who I, can, also yeah. read, I also read that um, uh, it, it, every new royal, so if, if one of the royals dies and a new royal uh, is appointed, he has to renew every warrant because exactly. they, they, they stop. Uh, exactly, exactly. And it's and uh, I, I know there's there's all a pr uh, and a procedure, and uh, so we are very happy to uh, to announce also that limited edition, very limited, because mm -hmm. they we only made three thousand bottles, half of it went to um to england and the other half all over the world so uh, yeah. uh so very limited uh, indeed very limited so um 10 years old so you see this is a tony style uh this is really the 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 level of uh, of the tony and uh, i think it's important to taste between 10 and 20 mm -hmm. because you know there is 10 20 30 40 50 years old uh, but the big difference, it's between 10 and 20. Yeah. From 20 to 30 to 40, there are nuances, uh, there are difference, but it's really the big difference, it's between 10 and 20. Well, and, if, if uh, you think about it, your wine goes through puberty and becomes adult. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's a good way to, uh, to, uh, to, to say it. Yeah. And uh, because in the 10 years, you still have a transition of the ripe fruit to the dry fruit. When you get to the 20 years old, you are completely in the dry fruit mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and makes it very elegant. It's like silk. I don't know if you are already tasting 20 years old. Well, I was just going to suggest maybe we should just pour both of them together and then taste Why them not? together. Why not? There's already a tasting note by Mark for the 10 year old too, I see, so. Very good. I'll just pour this first and then go and check that out. Nose is soft and elegant with delicate nose of wood, embellished with the aroma of overripe fruit. This is repeated on the palate with blueberries, figs and blood oranges in a star roll, followed by soft nutty and notes of chocolate and particularly nice finish. Would go well with hard cheese or tartatin. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh I understand all the list of adjectives that Mark has. He has all for... <laughs> well done, well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. And uh, Mark, Mark, just, just uh, to know, is this going on the blog too, or is that just reserved for whiskey, the blog? Uh, this is going on the blog in about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark uh, has, a, has, the, has a record, uh, Luis, of 
writing tasting notes and just after the it's finished it, it's already online so oh, wow 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 oh, quite well done well done so uh, if you are tasting 20 years old um just just imagine this to have a bottle of 20 years old to have a bottle <clears throat> in the market of 20 years old we lose two bottles Two thirds of the volume yep. predestinated to make twenty years old goes to the to the angel shares. Uh, I hope I have a place there uh, with such a <laughs> such a generosity of wine that we promote, <laughs> but most of it goes to the skies. It's it's this is what purifies and makes the wine more delicate. We do what we call racking every fourteen months. And there is the evaporation, and that concentrates the wines, so it increases the level of sugar, but and gives more refined purity to the wine. And this is, I think, the top summum of it. It's twenty years old. Mm -hmm. I love twenty years old. I think this is the most balanced, the most everything is there <clears throat> in terms of licorice. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of licorice, in terms of uh, I need a glass of twenty years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I dried dried throat. So um, uh, I think for me it's the summer, and it gets a value for money. It's a wine that uh, should be a consumer price in the seventy euros. Mm -hmm. When you go up to thirty years old, you are already it's over hundred euros. Yeah, I know. So sixty, it's expensive. It's a lot of money for a bottle of port. Mm -hmm. no doubt but the money is there the wine is unique is unique i believe a lot i i i believe a lot in uh, in the 20 years old and you know we we talk about single harvest collators and uh, but you can compare a collator with 20 years in the barrel also just bottle a collector 2003 together with the 20 years old you know the difference will not be that much. You know, no. the work with the blend or just a single year oxidation, it's it's the 20 years gets a really high level of pour. Mm -hmm. I, for me, it's uh, it's all, always a wine who amazes me to taste. While we're uh, waiting for some, uh, some other uh, reactions, maybe I have um, another uh, in your, in your presentation, I have a, uh, Another interesting picture, uh, Louis. So I'm just going to show it and ask you to, to tell us about this. What are we seeing here? Exactly. Because the if you just go back on the previous where you see the casks. So here you see ruby style, tony style, wooden ports. And the next one, you see the vintage cellar. That's where we store our vintage. It doesn't exist anymore. This was completely destroyed and we have the bottles now in another in another place. But it shows us the three styles that you can find in port wine. Mm -hmm. Ruby style vat, Tony style barrel, complexity vintage port, which ages in the in the bottle. Vintage <laughs> port it's bottle after two years. And then the wine gets maturity. When it's a tailor's vintage, maturity is between 20, 30 years after the bottling. When it's a single tinta vintage, the maturity is between 15 to 20 years after bottling. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think it's important uh, to show the styles and the aging, how do we, we work? Yeah. of the aging of the wine. We don't have any vintage to taste, but uh, surely uh, other opportunities will come for, yeah. for, for that. Question uh, from uh, Jean-Louis is, uh, can you keep the 20 years also for four to six weeks after opening the bottle or? Even a little bit more because it's an oxidized wine. So it has been living longer time with the air and the, and the, and the wood. So it has more resistance. So we recommend between six and eight weeks. Ruby style white ports between four and six weeks. 
Tony Styles between six and eight uh, weeks. Yeah. All right. Um, Luis, another very intriguing um, slide in your presentation is the next one. I don't know if I can show it already, but uh, I'm just going to do it. Yes. Well, what are we looking at here? It's very, uh, well, the, the, you, you mentioned the word I forgot now, very, you said very. Uh, interesting or or uh, I don't know I, I forgot you, you said something I said yeah. and uh, the answer is maybe because it's written in French <laughs> oh no 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 that's yes, uh, joking, that's, joking, that's post pas problème, ça, mais... <laughs> that was pas problem <laughs> no <laughs> no no it's yes this this um this map actually it's quite interesting because you can see on the or uh, horizontal lines uh, all the raw materials, the grapes, red grapes, white grapes. We talked about the grape varieties, mostly of the of the white. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention the red, which are maybe you know them already, which are mainly six uh, grape rights, which are Torriga Nacional, Torriga Francesa, Tinta Jorij. Tinta Jorij in Spain, it's Tempranillo. Mm -hmm. It's the most reliable grape variety in the Iberian Peninsula. Tintucão, Tinta Barroca, Tinta Amarela, all of them with their own characteristics. And then, type de recipient. So, uh, what we use, uh, foudre, vat, barrique, barrels, you see? Mm -hmm. And bottle on the uh, corner, on the left corner. For the vintage, yeah. Okay, for the vintage. And then, blends or, or, or batch. We have batch only made from one year. Mm -hmm. And we have batches made from different years. And then we have what we call the official categories that most of the houses use, like Reserve Ruby, Ruby, Tony, uh, Reserve Tony. And then what we mention in the labels of tailors, mm -hmm. our own, uh, our, some of our own uh, uh, designation. And then the aging of each of the wines. So, for instance, you can compare the difference between Ruby and Tony. What it says to us, it says both wines have been aging in wood contact for three years, mm -hmm. but after that time, Ruby kept his natural Ruby color and the Tony got a little bit uh, uh, different, more oxidized, more brownish color. Why is that? You go up, it's because Ruby aging food mm -hmm. and Tony aging barrels. That yeah. is what makes the difference. You see? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this is basically a, a way to compare the different styles, the different and labels, understand the different, the different types of exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Another example, late bottle vintage, to vintage, which I already explained. Mm -hmm. You see vintage port bottle after two years and the wine gets maturity inside the bottle mm -hmm. after a certain time. Late bottle vintage was bought, stayed longer time between four to six years. Mm -hmm. And then when it's bottled, it's ready to drink. So both wines aged, uh, both wines from single year Mm -hmm. But one is aging in the bottle and the other aged in the vat. In the vat. So, Luis, yeah. can I, um, this, this uh, schematic, can I sell this on the black market or can I just uh, <laughs> email <laughs> this to all the participants? If you give me a royalty because I created it. Yes, of course. You, 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 you can sell it. Uh, you can sell. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's uh, of, you can use it, of course, with pleasure. It, with pleasure. Because yeah. it's very... It's very formative. Huh? It really mm -hmm. gives you a precision for what uh, yeah, it is. Uh, precision of the aging of the port. So just for everybody in the session here, I'll uh, I'll make a PDF of the presentation and uh, send it to you afterwards. So you also have this uh, to, to use for all your enjoyment. Uh, yeah. I'm just looking. Is there another slide coming after this? Uh, it's just the, the lineup again uh, of the, the, the wines we had tonight. Exactly. There you go. I don't know. I saw Mark has written a tasting note about the 20-year-old again, which ends with absolutely delicious. So 
I don't think much more has to be said. Uh, <laughs> it's 20 years, it's, I like, you know, all the, I don't know, which, can someone say uh, which of its favorite wine uh, was? Yeah, that was also going to be my, my, my question, ah, okay. so... Very good. What uh, what do you guys think? What was your favorite? What was, what was maybe the most surprising port that you tried tonight? Um, because I guess most of you are very familiar with the, the Tawnies, but maybe not so much with the Reserve or maybe with the, with the LBV. So, um, yeah, interested to see. Uh, so I, I'll give everybody some time. Um, while they're doing that, Luis, um, what is in store for Taylors in the next in the near future? What are you guys up to? Uh, uh, what you mean? Sorry. Um, what, what is what is? Uh, are there any special bottlings to be expected, or special uh, events, maybe, or something interesting uh, that that you're going to do? Well, we um, we uh, like I like I just said, uh, we just launched the um, the the single uh, no no the VV the very, very very old port very, for very the old, yeah. Peronation, which is an eighty years old wine. Last year we launched, and we were also the first. We 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 motivated to launch the category fifty years old. Mm -hmm. We launched last year the Golden Age, which came out in the market in the beginning of the summertime, and then in September we launched a VVOP also, very well presented. That all of that you can see in our website or mm -hmm. Google it. Which yeah, the website, also... by the way, everybody is very, very interesting. There's lots of information on, on port wine in general and on Taylor's. So, so it's very interesting to just browse through the website of Taylor's Port. Sorry, Luis, I interrupted you. No, 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 no not at all. I'm just in, trying to, uh, to um, I want to, um, to show you a slide. Oh, yeah, and, you should, uh, be able was... to, should be able to share. To share. But uh, no, I don't want this. I don't want this. I would like to uh, put my screen back to normal, but I, 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 ah, here it is. Maybe it's here. Here, no. You should be able on the on the bottom of the of the screen uh, in the middle. There should be something uh, says share screen, and then you can uh, select which screen you want to share with everybody. Yeah, but I want to increase my. Uh, Camera and I can't my uh, visual. I do. What do you mean? Uh, because I, I minimize it. I would like to maximize it. Ah, but I, uh, if you share it, it'll be it'll be. Uh... But I I can't I I. Uh, you can't I read can't... it yourself. <laughs> okay. God, what did I do? I I uh, tack. You should have uh, the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is open, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sorry to. Uh, but I cannot do Zoom. I can say I can see you. Okay. Exit. Ah, here it is. Oh, exit minimized. Exactly. Okay. And now I can share. You should be able yeah. to if you move it's your cursor. Figures, huh? It's statistics. I'm going to yeah. share with yeah. you. If you share a screen, we should see them all on the on the screen. Yes, it's starting. And I can see it now. Yeah. Yes. Can you see now? Yeah. It's it's a slide that I prepare for another presentation. It's a Fonseca slide, but these are these are numbers of all the ports sold until uh, during 2022. Mm -hmm. 2022. So you can see in volume, the first market still is France mm -hmm. with with nearly 27% of market share. Wow. And then you get Portugal with 70.3 share. And then in third, Belgium. There we are. 10.4 share. You are the third biggest port wine consumer. If you go per capita, because in Portugal, we are 11 million. Mm -hmm. You are more or less the same, I suppose. And in Portugal, we have tourism. We have the diaspora. One million Portuguese uh, one road. We have 12 million tourists to come every day to Portugal. So Portugal, you could break it into three. But in Belgium, it's local consumption. So mm -hmm. you are those who drink more 
port per capita. <laughs> you are the biggest uh, consumers of port. The mm -hmm. thing is, when you go to value, next, uh, you go to Belgium, you go down to sixth place. Mm -hmm. You are third in volume, but sixth in, in, uh, in value. It means that you are drinking the low end port. Yep. And this is my message to you. You are wine shops. You, you have to influence your customer to upgrade. You see here in volume, when you say special categories here mm -hmm. in volume, categories speciais, yes. Belgium only sells 7.7% .7 of premium ports. Yeah. 92 uh, 91.3% uh, uh, is standard ports. Mm -hmm. That's why you are third in volume and you are only sixth in uh, value. So there is work to do for port in Belgium. There is potential. There is, uh, there is, uh, you yeah. like ports, but yeah. we need to show you or to you, to your customers, to show that they can they can really maybe drink less, but drink, drink much better. better. Yeah. And we are very well positioned for for this. I think, I think this is a very interesting uh, uh, slide, also. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's what Chris says in the in the in the chat. It's so so it's mostly supermarket sales in in Belgium with the lower end uh, port wines that are getting sold here. Because yeah. Because they are the only point of sales in wine shops in Belgium, there are not so many. Mm -hmm. You know, in France there are two thousand wine shops, but mm -hmm. but but uh, the, most of the port is sold in supermarkets still. Yeah. But in Belgium, yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, the influence of supermarkets is still very very mm -hmm. strong. But um, th th this kind of uh, figures are available in the Port Wine Institute web page okay that you can go and you can get the the statistics okay that's so always interesting to, to have statistics always interesting to understand uh, and if you accumulate like i said in the beginning if you go to france so france 27 uh, mm. portugal 17 so 27 uh, uh, 34 uh, then you get belgium 44 then mm. you get uh, Netherlands, your neighbors, 54. And then you get England, uh, uh, 64. I, I don't know if I did a, a good calculation. So you see uh, um, at least more than 60%, I said 80 in the beginning, but most 60% of the sales, it's sold only in these five countries. What's, what Sebastian says is also interesting. He says, it's interesting, interesting to see that countries where the sale of alcohol is more regulated, they sell more premium ports, like the Correct. Arab countries, the Nordic countries. Correct. Because they are young countries, uh, uh, which they were started to be opened by us. And we started to go from the top, not from the, the low. Yeah. For instance, Canada, United States, it's markets that we opened 40 years ago. And we are very strong in Canada, United States. And you see also they have, uh, they have also quite premium, premium. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest markets for tailors, it's England, of course, United States, Canada, Portugal, Denmark, uh, the, for the top five, uh, Denmark, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely. Okay. Going back to the to the favorites of the night, Luis. Uh, I see uh, just lots of. Well, it goes between the twenty year old and the LBV for most people. Uh, yes. Most surprising is the reserve tawny for uh, Tess and also uh, for for Sebastian. So for, for most people, it's going between the 20 and the LBV as the favorite port of the night. So, Well, that's interesting. I think very uh, Ruby style. The, yeah. you, we, you have your, uh, all the, the group of tonight is a more Ruby winey style than the Tony licorice style. Uh, very good, very good. 
Every, we are happy. We are happy for that. You're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Maybe uh, you could you could uh, stop sharing the screen, uh, Luis. So yes, can, uh, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh, just uh, oh. stop stop sharing if you go. Uh, I did. Is it okay now? No. No. No, you should go up, and it's it's somewhere. It should say stop sharing. Ah, uh, stop sharing. There we oh. go. There we are again. Yeah. Right. Um, I think we're um, uh, slowly coming to to the end of uh, of the session here. If there's any more questions, guys, now is the moment to ask Luis uh, because uh, we're going to uh, otherwise we're going to close off the session uh, so he can uh, go on and enjoy his holiday. So uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> interrupting your holiday for us. No uh, worries. It's with that. Uh, you, you see that I do it the way I do it. I, mm. I'm a port enthusiastic. I think uh, port well, is an amazing drink. The region, it's an amazing region. The vinification, it's an amazing way to do it. Everything is quite so. I mm. love to uh, be able to uh, to do it on my way and explain it. So oh, it's 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 Holiday very easy for me. It's very easy for me. For from all the sessions I have done, I think this is the one I have to, had to do the least work. So that's that's very good. <laughs> Always enjoy less work. Um, Nick is asking the very very old port. What is the average age of those? Eighty years old. Over eighty, 80 years old. Plus eighty. Eight zero eighty. Yes. So almost the age of King Charles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Uh, no so, questions, but a big so just thank you. To, uh, to recapitalize, so in it's a tawny port. So now you can get age tonnies. You have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and over 80, which is the VVOP, very, very old port. I Are think having a last drink. Oh, I'm just going to finish the the twenty year old. There was a bit left uh, in my glass, yeah, so yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm going yeah, to finish yeah. that. So that's the prerogative. The prerogative of the person who makes the samples. What's left over, I can drink. So there you go. <laughs> Very good. Maybe I will meet you all in uh, in the Sinoco tasting. I don't know if you attend this kind of tasting. Uh, uh, I hope so. Are you coming to Belgium in the near future, uh, Luis? Uh, normally, I come uh, at least once a year in the uh, beginning of October for the for the Sinoco aut autumn tasting. Oh yeah, that's and the 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 open day at at the offices. At the offices, correct, 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 correct. Okay. I have never Probably managed there to get with there the, but... with a range of wines, and uh, and uh, we also can taste. Maybe we should. Um, uh, um... Uh, invent a secret password for everybody who was here tonight that they come uh, can say to you when they come to, up to you and then you know they were there. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't I... know if you will recognize me being in such a dark screen. So. <laughs> oh, they, they will. They will. I, they I'm, will. I'm very they sure. <laughs> okay, Louis. So I uh, I think um, we're going to we're going to close off the, se the session here. Uh, I uh, Really want to thank um, you for uh, being so enthusiastic for talking about these wines and uh, educating us, but also um, just having fun with us with these wines, because that's the main idea, I think, uh, to to enjoy these wines. Um, I have to thank uh, Sinoco Spirits, of course, for um, uh, uh, um, asking me to organize and host this, because it's always fun to do this. Uh, and I have to thank everybody here in the session for being here, but it's because it's a lot more fun if there's people in the session, actually. So um, yeah, there and, you uh, go. Uh, Mark, thank you for your kind, uh, kind uh, words. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mark's blog is online. The link is in the chat. Uh, so you can, uh, it's wivi, W-H-I-V-I-E dot B-E. Uh, you can find the whole tasting notes in Dutch on his, like on his blog. Sounds like V-B-O-P also. It's very old, uh, age uh, wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you going so to... much. Very nice to meet you all. See and, you uh, next time. See you next time also. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.